okay. Everything's looking good. Uh, I'm so happy to have you here. Very happy to be here. You were the last on my list. I have talked to everybody, and I'm sure there'll be a few more coming in uh, over the weeks. But, wow, Mark Jackson is here at Talk in the Oroville, and everybody has been excited for, to hear from you. Uh, uh, Isaac has just been not only amazing this season, but his story through all three seasons has uh, just been remarkable, I guess we can say. Uh, how has it been for you these uh, over the course of the three seasons? How has it been playing Isaac? Good question. So he he's had an amazing character arc for the last three years, or oh, the last three seasons, let's say that. Mm. It's been like six <laughs> years. Yeah, it's been more than, than three years. It's been a long ass time. Um, yeah, so he's, yeah, he's, he's been given the right role treatment. Really, I've been so lucky to play a character that the Orville has, has made such a folk, uh, focal point. And, you know, Seth has been very kind to me in that respect. Yeah, he's, you know, as Seth always says with sci-fi, it's the aliens that are always the most interesting characters because they are so, in one sense, far removed from us. So you can have a lot of fun with them, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's obviously the case with Isaac. Um, yeah, his his journey's been incredible, and and my journey with it has been incredible too. Because, you know, I mean, we started from a position where I had to sort of completely invent this character. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you know the, the the outfit helped, of course, but it could only take you so far. And then once once we'd sort of got some sort of movement right for him, and and some sort of identity right for him. Then it was down to the writers to play with, with where he could go. And obviously his relationship with Claire was central to that. Yeah. Um, well, it's, um, I mean, over the course of the three seasons, it started off with, oh, he's, he's a, a, the fun robot guy, uh, right. some comic relief. And then it got a little bit more serious. He got, uh, got connected to the children. And it seemed like there was, oh, there might be something there with, with Claire next season wow was there something with claire uh but then of course there was the betrayal isaac's betrayal um and now season three it's about coexistence everyone learning to to coexist together and uh he needs to get people back on his side um yeah how how, how is that that journey uh for you it, this season i think in many respects isaac's character development reflects the tonal development of the show um, you know, as you just pointed out in the first season, he's the butt of many jokes. He's mm -hmm. his lack of understanding of human nature is a great source of, of humor for the show, um, which is great. And that actually is still that still um, continues because, you know, guess what? He still doesn't quite get humanity. And it's part <laughs> of it's part of his charm. Um, but but also at the same time, as as you know, as his story arc became more serious, you know, with the, the Kalon genocide and the uh, attempts to eliminate all biologicals and the war and, you know, his effective betrayal and then saving the day. And, and as you say, going into this season with his, his relationship with the, with the children and Claire and yeah, I mean, it, it, his journey does reflect the tonal progression of the show quite nicely, actually. Um, and it, it's been great to play uh, to play that because, it, you know, a lot of subtlety is involved there because the show has changed subtly. And I think I think, you know, playing Isaac requires a bit of subtlety there as well, particularly when we're I'm transitioning between him as a robot and as a human. Yeah, um, when he gets to wear his Mark Jackson suit. <laughs> yes, I like. Yeah, I read that on Twitter from someone and I really enjoyed that. <laughs> well, to me, Isaac is. The most human. I mean, he 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 holds up that mirror as an outsider looking in to remind us how we as humans are, just from his observations, the things he doesn't understand. Um, was there any type of uh, conversation or work that you had to do to to bring that out to to in, in the character? To to he just seems the most human to me, even though he's obviously not human not emotional at all but i have thoughts on that as well it's interesting you say that um i've not had anyone say that he's the most human to me before um i you know i think it's interesting because 
even when I, I play him as a human, I have to make sure that I rein back the, um, you know, rain, apart from the last episode, if you've mm. seen it, but no spoilers. Um, I have to rein back the, um, it's very hard to say, but the naturalism, yeah. the sort of the human warmth, which we all, we all have, no matter how um, reserved we are, it infiltrates every way, every way we communicate. And with Isaac, I really have to be careful with that because that is all fundamentally rooted in emotion and he does not have emotion, so it's very hard. But I think what he does have is, you know, he's very fair. Mm -hmm. um, he, he, looks, he looks at, at you know, humans in a very logical way. And in some ways, it's probably a very good way for us to look at ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, because, you know, fairness and, and giving everyone a good ch crack of the whip is, is, is what's needed, particularly in, nowadays, I think. Um, yeah, just completely blunt. He's completely blunt at what he yeah. sees. Um, I talked with Penny yesterday all about the latest episode. I, mean, I never miss an episode. As soon as it's out, I'm watching it. Uh, seeing Isaac not only in his Mark Jackson suit, but with emotion... Uh, for the first time, I mean, I love watching you play Isaac as yourself. I, mean, I see no difference. You, you're playing him exactly the same as far as I'm concerned. I can, it's Isaac to me, the, the non-emotional Isaac, the, the innocence that you can see uh, in his eyes. But finally, we get this, those, those sparks, explosions of emotion. What was it like for you taking this dialogue, uh, applying it to a definitely human version of Isaac in this in this episode uh it was such a treat I spoke to Seth before we started filming season three and he sort of took me through the the um the, you know the points of Isaac's journey in that um, in that's in this latest season and he talked about this episode and he talked about this scene and he said the first thing we see in this scene is Isaac's smile and you know, in his head, that was such an important detail. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting because the fans have really picked up on it on social media. And I, I think that's fantastic because I'd sort of forgotten that, um, you know, that was a part of it. I did it, but I kind of forgotten about it. But um, it was so subtle and it's such a testament to his writing that, that you know, that, that, that is such a significant point in that, um, in that scene. Um, yeah, great. I mean, listen, I'm a... I'm a trained actor. I've been acting mm -hmm. for years. Um, I've been acting with all the emotions in my face and everything else for years and years and years before this show. So for me, it was it was a very familiar challenge to to you know to portray a human being that has emotions. Mm -hmm. um, what was great about it and so beautiful to portray was that he was so childlike with it. You know, it's emotions for the first time. Yeah, and it's love. And it's fear and loneliness and wonder and protection. He was, yeah, he was feeling his entire life all at once in that moment, it seemed to me. Absolutely. It's extraordinary. And I think, you know, I had to think, what does this compare to? And, you know, obviously I've never done any drugs, but I imagine that it would be like being very, very high yeah. um, for the first time. Um, and it's, it's a sort of sensory overload coming from without and within, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it was great, it was such fun to play. And I really enjoyed doing the transition at the end of the scene where he sort of flipped back into yeah. Isaac. And it was like a switch. And I knew as soon as his eyes changed, your eyes changed, uh, I should say, I knew exactly what happened at that moment. I mean, I've absolutely, I felt it. And uh, I never, as a fan, I never expected Isaac to get emotions. It never really crossed my mind. But then when it happened, I was like, do I want this? Is this something I want? Yes, I want this. I want this so bad. Yeah. And then it was taken away. Yeah, it's funny because I never, I never expected, I never expected Isaac to ever be human, mm -hmm. let alone to have emotions. So, you know, I'm on this journey with everybody else. Yeah, well, I felt I he always had emotions, just a AI type of version of emotions that we as humans might not understand. Uh, empathy, well, this, things like this, that. This is the great debate, isn't it? Does mm -hmm. he have emotions? What are his... I think he's, you know, I think he doesn't have emotions in the way that we understand them. 
And I think what's great about Isaac is he's, he's on his own journey to create what I believe is an emotional understanding, mm. a sort of emotion adjacent <laughs> yeah. uh, function. And you need that if you're going to hang around with biologicals, let alone, you know, get romantically involved with them. Mm. Plus, he's, adapt he's able to adapt. We knew that right away. So I was like, OK, he can adapt to these situations, come with, uh, you know, he might not even understand that he has emotions, but I always felt that he, he did in some way. Yeah. Um, what was it like when you first got the role? Uh, what did you understand about Isaac at that time? And what did you do to prepare for it? When I first got the role, I mean, when the, the audition sides came through, it was he's an AI robot life form, artificial intelligence. <clears throat> to be fair, robot was never used. I shouldn't use it myself. Um, he was, I mean, obviously in a full suit. So I knew that when I got the part. Um, the first episode was quite mis misleading about him, I thought. I mean, there was this whole yeah. stupid racist joke, which pleasingly we never developed because it was just kind of daft. Um, I think I think the, the first episode showed everyone's presumptions of what a Kalon is, which is fine. Um, so I was in London when I got the part um, and I just finished a West End run of War Horse. Mm -hmm. And uh, this part came through, it was completely mad. Go to LA, <laughs> like work with Seth MacFarlane who I already loved. I, I watch, I still do American Dad, Family Guy every day. I just mm -hmm. love it. It's like my, it's like my bedtime story. Yeah. Um, uh, don't tell him that. That'll be really embarrassing if he finds out. Oh, that. I won't. I won't. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, I'll tell him you yeah. don't watch any of his stuff. Just the yeah, exactly. Barely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hate it. Hate it all. <laughs> so then I yeah, and I, I got the part off a of tape. I didn't even have to come and see anyone in person. It was it was mad. It was all mad. And I get to LA, and you know, I, I suddenly realize that everyone knows Seth and the cast. I'm just mm -hmm. this complete random um and yeah i mean i think the first few weeks were pretty nerve-wracking and a, a lot of it was due to the fact that i was having to kind of build isaac up you know from the ground on set um and personally i feel like that shows in the first season i i gave him more physicality for the second season and you know um but it's all a it's all a journey yeah well what well, speaking of journey uh, now you are a, uh, a a British actor that finds himself having to live in the United States for a while. Uh, what was that transition like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was it was so cool. It was cool. It was great. The 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 chances of a British actor coming over to the states like I did are, are so few and far between. I was so lucky. Um, and then California, Los Angeles, what a place to live um <clears throat> yeah it was good i mean it, it was a little bit hard sometimes for my husband and i we weren't even a, we weren't married actually at the beginning of it we got married uh, about three three years oh, i should know this shouldn't i married <laughs> probably over three years ago but not four years mm -hmm. and um <clears throat> he he had to keep working in london but travel back and forth yeah it was you know it was it was it was a wonderful wonderful few years i've i've relocated back to london now but um who knows? Hashtag renew the Orville. Maybe I know. That's my, that was my next thing I was going to bring up. If uh, if we get that exciting announcement that we were all hoping for, how excited are you to 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 further the character of Isaac in further seasons? I'm very excited. I mean, this journey is not over. It can't be, I don't think. I mean, you know, Seth doesn't want it to be. The cast don't want it to be. We're we have so many stories to tell. Yeah, and the, the type of genre where it's it's sci-fi, but it's very human-oriented. It's uh, you know social commentary. You'll never run out of of stories to tell and and give us things adventures to go on and learn from. Yeah, it's the, it's the Star Trek model. You know, yeah. it's it's and 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 it can be applied for forever. Really, it's, yeah. I mean, as we see with the Orville, it doesn't even all have to be sci-fi. You guys can pick up. It, put any type of genre into an episode yeah that's it i mean seth's really done really well to 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 to, to make that distinction between star trek and 
and the Orville. He, you know, it's it's he's carved an, its own niche for it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I think you know it's down to Hulu, down to Disney, or whoever our overlords are. But um, and if they don't if they don't want it, maybe someone else will pick it up. I I feel like the will. I is hope there. they want it. The fans want it, and there's the a lot of will. fans, new ones yeah. every day. I've I've been bowled over by the social. Um, the social response and it's so wonderful to hear it um, we're very lucky to have the fans we do and you know let's let's keep it going if we can well I think Isaac is the one that is uh, bringing out the most emotion in the fandom every time people say oh this one made me cry it's always because of Isaac mm-hmm. uh, Isaac is making everybody cry this season uh, in the show yeah. He's um, as I say, he's just he's just this wonderful weirdo. I we always love the weirdos because they, I think they either they either represent the people we always want to be, but we're too reserved or scared to be them. Um, you know, or they they represent the kids that we left behind, and I I just kind of think, you know, he does that so well as a character. I mean, it's it's the writing really, but it's a it's an honor to play him. Definitely. Well, one last thing I want to say is we are just days away from finally a San, Di- a San Diego Comic Con Orville yes. uh, uh, panel. Uh, are you looking forward to it? Is, do you have any surprises you're able to reveal, or just reveal that there's hopefully some surprises? I'm very much looking forward to it. And listen, every time I go to San Diego Comic Con and do the Orville panel, I get the surprises at the same time as everybody else. So yeah. Um, who knows? Uh, I'm I'm we I'm I'm here already. We're gearing up for a hell of a week. It's going to mm-hmm. be intense in all the good ways. I think. Well, I'll be watching. Everyone else will be watching, and hopefully, as the years go by, we'll keep watching new episodes of the Orville subtitle, whatever they want to call it, <laughs> New Horizons, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the Isaac yeah. Show, whatever you want to call it. We're going to watch it. But I want to thank you for for coming by, talking to me. Uh, putting up with my dumb bearded face and uh your dumb bearded face oh thank you i I love your mark jackson face and your isaac face thank you i'm also sporting a beard in beard in uh honor of you oh thank you very much Uh best wishes to you best wishes to your family to your husband and to uh having a great time this weekend i'll be watching thanks very much man i think a lot bye now